All right, continue. This is part, I don't know, four or five or something. Schrodinger's cat was an experiment where they had a cat in a box. And it's not a true experiment. It's, it's, it's a hypothetical experiment where you don't, basically, you don't know if the cat's in the box until it's observed. When you look at an atomic, the atomic structure of something, you don't know, you can't know if and if if it's an if it's a wave or a particle until it's observed, the double slit experiment is uh, another one where they shine light through two slits. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. That we cannot be sure about anything until we observe it, even on the quantum level. How does that extend to the macro level? And um, can we really be sure about anything? The idea being that in a couple thousand years ago. We needed explanations for why these things on Earth happen the way they do. You know, during the same time that these that, that that many religious biblical texts were written, during the same time in history, people believed that uh, they believed in uh, geocentricity. They believed that the Earth was really at the center of the universe, and they also some people believed that the sun was actually in the sky; that it was part of the Earth. Some people, uh, <laughs> you get the picture. Everybody, you know, the the flat Earth. So we needed explanations for why things are the way they are. So we created religions to explain, or should I say, utilize parts of religions to try to explain why these things are the way they are. And sometimes we got to the point where we were so flustered, we'd just say, well, because God made it that way. You know, I think uh, most modern people can, can look at it, the idea that God created the world in seven days and realize that, no, there wasn't some, you know, uh, figure molding a planet and then throwing trees on there and animals, you know, there's obviously something more complex than that. Uh, how did it form? Did animals, did the people just appear? And what did they appear out of? Out of, out of thin air? And you know, We understand how atom atoms work, we understand a little bit. We understand what molecules are and how things bond together through electromagnetism and gravity. And so this answers many of the questions that we had created false beliefs to explain. And what that did was left a lot of people holding the bag. Um, a lot of people will just say that science is flawed. A lot of people who don't want to believe in it would just say, well, the science is wrong. Um, and science is flawed quite often. Sure, they're at the mercy of the same people uh, that are funding their research, and they want to get the answers they want. But sometimes things are just the way they are, and you really can't deny it. You know, When enough people confirm something, we have to take it as empirical evidence or else we'll never believe anything. So, while people may say, well, don't believe anything you hear at all, and just everything's up in the air, none of us really can live that way. Because if you don't attach yourself to at least some, something that you can believe, and I'm not being believe in, like a religion, I mean just believe, like, I exist, is a perfect example. You know, I think, therefore I am. Ergo sum, right? This is the, the basis for a lot of the philosophies. You know, get to the root of it. I exist. Why do I exist? Uh, because there must be something greater than me that created me. Okay, and how do I prove that? Well, I can't do that, so I have to do the best I can to try to describe it how I would see it. And then we anthropomorphize the, the you know, the, the gods and, and put them in human characters. Um, it's a crazy world. It's a crazy... Uh, It's very complicated, and I, why do I bring up, why do I even talk about this subject is kind of where I wanted to go right now, is because I 